Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Um, we are here today, we are here for the 13th IU talk, the Independent Evaluation Unit organized talks. Uh, today we have uh, uh, Dr. Tseun uh, Shin. Okay, I try to say it as you want me to say it. <laughs> I failed, but I will try again next time. Okay. So she is a senior researcher uh, at the JW Lee Center for Global Medicine of the College of Medicine, Seoul National University. She came today from Seoul for this, and she is in charge there of program evaluation. And among her, the things that she's been uh, doing, or she's doing, I noticed that she's also working on evaluation research and improved the cook stove intervention project in Nepal, which is just to make a link with what we do in GCF. It's, it features in many of our, uh, uh, well, in some of our uh, funded projects. Uh, however, uh, in general, she has a, a BA uh, from Tufts University, a Master in International Affairs from the School of International Public Affairs at Columbia University, and a PhD in Public Policy from Seoul National University. Now, that's her background. Now, the topic is very interesting because it's, a, it's something which concerns GCF. That's why uh, uh, she's additionally welcome, besides presenting results, the results of her research. But that's something very interesting for us because it's about the uh, aid, fragmentation of aid, which is, co which is something concerning GCF uh, very much. According to the definition, probably she's going to repeat it, but uh, when that's, that happens when aid comes from too many donors, which creates additional transaction costs, additional work, additional reporting. In our case, also case of evaluation, it may create additional evaluations and uh, uh, additional ways of seeing how things can be uh, managed. So, um, what she's going to talk about is this, uh, some results of, of her research on uh, the effect of, of donor competition on aid effectiveness. So how donors, traditional donors, but I guess also new ones, uh, in the donor arena you've seen uh, in the last decade or two decades, many countries which be, before were um, recipient countries, now they became actually donors. So how they react to donor competition and how these specific countries respond to the changing dynamics of international development. The link there with the GCF is how institutions working in climate change, finance, can better work in, uh, in the future. So um, I think we have a very good audience again, as is a tradition for these IU talks. And we had prepared the uh, uh, samples for you uh, based on the response we had received until yesterday. Today there was uh, much more participation, so sorry for those of you who came today, did not find any, anything, but I'm sure you will be fed with a very interesting topic for this talk, and with that, <laughs> I give the uh, floor to Tseu for her presentation, please. Is it working? Is this working? Yes. I think it's working now. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, again, my name is Julian. Um, I actually came here a couple uh, year ago, a couple years ago, my professor who was back in, uh, back then my advisor while I was doing my PhD came here to give the lunch talk. So it's very um, I don't know like it's very honor for me to come here again to give the talk now, not as a uh, not as an audience. And I'm glad that many of you are here, um, probably interested in this topic. <laughs> so and I hope uh, some of you can find interesting insights or lessons from the research. Um, again, the topic is donor competition and how it affects the aid effectiveness um, and the causal mechanism behind this relationship. So the background is this, because we are now in the SDG, era of SDGs and there's no clear lines between um, traditional donors or emerging donors or even um, the uh, recipients the, who um, had in the past the recipients are now the donors and they're uh, sometimes they're at the same time donors and recipients and the emerging donors uh, known as widely known as China India and any SSDC countries probably you know the terms the South South development countries they are now um, emerging as very large donors but they're not in under the principle of the OECD DAC. So there are actually a wide uh, range of opinions regarding this uh, emerging donors and also the increasing donor competition. Um, some are very negative. They regard these emerging donors uh, are threatening this uh, regime of international development 
and they, there are actually many research results that donor competition and the fragmented aid is resulting into the um, impairing uh, aid effectiveness. And the, the impairing aid effectiveness is caused by the uh, despairing uh, administrative capacity of the recipient side, um, and it's harming the bureaucratic quality of the recipient side, and also increasing the transaction cost. But there are also positive op uh, opinions regarding this uh, phenomenon. Um, because with the, uh, with the competition, uh, people think that uh, the re donors would refine their programs to, prov uh, to make more impact. And also there are some opinions that recipient, uh, the emerging countries actually have better understanding this understandings regarding the, what the recipient countries need and what they are uh, really uh, hoping to achieve with the aid programs. So there is a need for the, um, it's, it's becoming very important to understand the new dynamics in the international development cooperation field with these new uh, stakeholders. So the, the main research I'm gonna uh, talk about mostly during this presentation is the relationship between the donor competition and aid effectiveness. Uh, it, my research is different from the previous ones um, because the aid effectiveness here is in, measured in the sector level, not in the country level. Because usually well, the previous literatures are usually measuring the aid effectiveness with the GDP or more aggregated level indicators. But here, uh, the aid effectiveness is measured in different sectors with different indicators for, the, for each sector. And the donor competition too. Um, usually when uh, donor competition is discussed in previous literatures, they only talked about the uh, donor competition between the uh, OECD DAC donors. Because the data was only available from the OECD CRS. But now there are uh, many other sources that I can gather the uh, data from the emerging donors. So I included uh, emerging do data of the emerging donors into calculating the donor competition so they can be accounted as well. Oops. Oops. I clicked something I shouldn't. Okay, we're back here. Um, so this is the main part that I'm going to be discussing. But the whole research actually has another component, actually two other components. Another is um, to see the mediation effects of the doc donors' allocation behaviors, uh, how they um, act, uh, how they work in within the relationship between donor competition and aid effectiveness. So, and we call that mediation effect because it's um, affecting within this causal relationship. And this was the second part of the research. The third part is analyzing the recipient behavior um, as a mediation effect as well. But this one it was not analyzed empirically, but analyzed with uh, qualitatively. So that was the third part of the research. So I'm gonna mostly talk about the first part of the research, but uh, if the time allows, I'll um, introduce briefly about the part two and part three and share with you the findings. So again, the research question is just bluntly this. If uh, does donor competition, especially the one driven by the emerging donors, um, always do, do they always entail a negative impact on aid effectiveness? And the second one is, does donor competition have the same effect in every sector? Um, just briefly, the time frame of the analysis was 2000 to 2013, um, mainly because uh, the cons consideration of emerging donors are starting uh, did start in uh, early 2000, and the endorsing of SSDC providers who are the major emerging donors are endorsed in the ECRA agenda for action, which uh, was happened in 2008. And the emerging donors included in, the, in this research were classifi classified into three different types. Uh, first uh, classification was SSDC pro providers, um, mainly the China, India, Brazil, uh, Egypt, Thailand, and the Arab donors. Arab donors are not always uh, always the DAC donors. They don't have any intention to join the DAC. They want to just keep themselves away from them. But they're actually uh, providing lots of aid and they're very active in um, doing the aid programs in other countries. 
And the third is the real emerging donors who recently joined DAC or who recently started, started their aid programs to recipient countries. They're largely following the principles of OECD DAC, but they're uh, still very new and very, uh, so we, we actually, in literally, they're very emerging. Um, the research is looking at 11 sectors. Uh, I, th these uh, classification of sectors are largely following the OECD DAC uh, sector classification. Uh, I deleted some of the sectors that are not worth looking at the outcome or effectiveness, such as administrative cost or budget supporting. And uh, some of the sectors here, you can see health and population are combined, and environment and multi-sector are combined because uh, it's because uh, I picked the indicate country level indicators um, to measure the effectiveness of each sectors, and those sectors that are combined, they share the indicators. Uh, to measure the aid effectiveness. I'll show you in detail, like, um, I'll talk about this first. So for example, in health and population, because the aid programs or projects uh, that are belong to these sectors, they share very um, similar characteristics. So most of their outcomes can be measured with the similar indicators. That's why I combine those two sectors. So I used, um, eight different indicators to measure aid effectiveness of this sector. And for the water sanitation, I included these three uh, sectors to show you the indicators I used because I thought, uh, because you guys are in GCF, might be interested in these sectors more. Um, so water sanitation, I um, mainly saw the improved sanitation facilities, rural and urban separately, improved water source. And for the environmental multi-sector, um, I put the CO2 emissions, total greenhouse gas emissions, renewable energy consumption to measure the aid effectiveness of these sectors. So going back to the data, um, so aid effectiveness, just I just showed you now, um, it's measured with different indicators for different sectors. Um, most of the uh, indicators were lagged one, two, three years because usually it takes time to see some what whatever the outcome is. And for the donor competition, I used the age fragmentation index to measure the donor competition. It's actually uh, inverse, uh, inverse of the Herfindahl index, which is often used in the business uh, field to measure the market concentration or um, market domination. So when you inverse it, you can measure the fragmentation of the market. And here, um, in the Academia of International Development, aid fragmentation fragmentation index is widely used to measure the donor competition or the, just the fragmentation level. So I calculated the aid fragmentation index with, uh, for each sector within a country and also did the country level calculation as well because some of uh, the data, the emerging, especially from the emerging donors, uh, they were lacking many sector level data although they have the country level aid amount but they don't have the sector specific uh, identi identified uh, aid amount. So I calculated both to see the results, how they, how this country level donor competition and sector level donor competition affects um, the aid effectiveness differently. So, uh, I, and I also included in the model, I'm not gonna show you the model, but uh, including the model is the emerging donors driven, aid, uh, uh, driven donor competition or aid fragmentation. It's calculated like this. Right. So I calculate the aid fragmentation with all donors first, and then um, subtract the aid fragmentation calculated without emerging donors, and then divide that value with the aid, fra aid fragmentation without emerging donors to um, um, get the portion of the donor competition that is driven only by the emerging donors. I don't know how much you can pay for this, but I won't go too deep into the methodology. So these are the control variables that are included in the research as well, um, just to control out other effects that might um, have influence on the aid effectiveness. So these are uh, the results. I skipped the methodology part because uh, I was informed that most of you are not familiar with the empirical analysis methodology. So. We are here with the result. 
So um, the SLF here, it means um, the sector level aid fragmentation. So because I was not, the, the focus of the research was not looking into each number of um, the, each sector within the country. It was to see the trends of the effect, um, how the donor competition is influencing in these countries and how the trends are. So I made the box plots with the um, uh, with the analysis results. And see, these are actually the same. The, I made two graphs to see the uh, individual sectors and aggregated sectors. The economic sectors actually are the sectors combined with business, communication, energy, and transport, water sanitation. Uh, water sanitation is a social, social sector, sorry. Multi-sector, it's the environmental multi-sector. Production sector is the industry and agriculture. Social sectors are the education sector, government sector, health and population, and water sanitation. So when you see, um, so we are, uh, I, I'm not sure how much you are familiar with the, um, the opinions on donor competition usually, but it's usually very negative. Like people say we should decrease the donor competi uh, competition, we should emphasize donor coordination to um, make the aid fragmentation, um, um, the eff to decrease the effect, negative effect of aid fragmentation. But here when you see it, it's not always negative when you look in into the sector level. And when you look at the result with the emerging donors driven competition, uh, it's not um, that hopeless because people say, oh, China is rising, emerging donors are rising, they're working um, um, they're working with the rules that are different from the OECD doc donors, uh, so do they harm the, this uh, field of international development? But the result, well, some of the, some of the results are negative, like here, the economic sector, the sector level, emerging donors uh, led donor competitions leading the negative effects in economic sectors. But this is mainly uh, due to the business sector. It doesn't mean that every economic sector, like um, <coughs> communication, transport, um, energy, are being negatively influenced. So overall, oh, I also did the analysis with only with the least developed countries to see like if the results are different. And the interesting part was that um, what if it's either positive or the negative, the trend will, trend was leading by the least developed countries. And I also did the, the analysis with the different time frame to see if the effect is decreasing or increasing over time. But as you can see, um, the effect was not, if there was a negative effect, it wasn't decreasing over time. So it means like whatever they are emphasizing, the donor, donor coordination is not actually very quite working. So in sum, uh, for the overall donor competition, uh, the positive effects were most, mostly salient in infra-heavy uh, sectors or the sectors uh, where their outcome is dependent on the monetary support. Those supports are very direct and can entail the immediate output that is actually considered as outcome. So it's very easy to find outcome uh, in these sectors. I think that's why the donor competition actually didn't really matter in these sectors. But then in social sectors, the story is different. Um, usually social sectors are considered, um, to, uh, considered to be difficult to achieve the outcome because um, to achieve the outcome in social sectors, you have to uh, bring about the in behavioral change of the recipient side. And it's difficult to monitor such behavioral change because you need a continuous and long-term um, monitoring of this change. And also, like, the complementarity or consecutiveness of the programs is more important in these sectors because uh, usually education program cannot be um, terminated in one year and expect any outcome from that. So you need like consecutiveness and complementary um, programs these sectors. So if aid is fragmented in these sectors, it's actually very likely that outcome cannot be achieved easily. So these were the 
major findings from the general donor competition and from the emerging donors driven competition the it was actually quite relieving that they were not very threatening according to the analysis result um, and some of the uh, positive results were also uh, found in the social sectors and multi-sector so there um, it is nice to see that because the emerging donors are increasing their aid in social sectors these days they were very much criticized before that they are um, focusing their aid in the infra heavy sectors like transport energy but now they are moving their focus into the social sectors and it gives the message that uh, their participation their increased participation in social sectors might uh, bring about positive changes but then um, the serious negative effect was observed in industry and business sector. Business sector is not actually, um, when you look at the aid allocation level, it's not, the table or graph is not included in this presentation, but emerging donors heavy sectors are usually transport, energy, health and population, and environment, um, those sectors, not industry, uh, not business, but um, it would, if you can remember, there was a serious negative impact observed in business sector. Um, so I decided to, well, it was my decision because it was my research. <laughs> so that our business sector, uh, we shouldn't be making too much consideration on the business sector. But industry sector is important because uh, emerging donors are pouring money into the industrial sectors in recipient countries. And the effect, negative effect was uh, led by the least developed countries. So we should um, just be warned that um, maybe more donor co uh, coordination should be made in these sectors or more monitoring uh, mechanisms should be developed. Um, so the conclusion was that, I just mentioned it, but the effect of emerging donors driven competition was not very threatening. And social sectors turned out to be more vulnerable to donor competition in general, both in emerging donors driven competition and general donor competition. And the result is quite different from the previous literature or previous other studies. That um, so, so I, based on this study, I thought the analysis in disaggregated level, like in sector level, should be encouraged more, um, rather than looking into the just GDP level um, to determine the uh, whether the aid effectiveness is dis being disparate or not. If have if we still have time, I'll just briefly introduce the second and third part. Do we have time? Yeah. If you, uh, it's the presentation. If you could just uh, introduce the question and maybe okay. the I'll just the conclusion. share the con introduction conceptual foundation and uh, just go to the findings right away. So the second part was yeah. Second part was uh, looking at the doc donors uh, allocation behaviors. So I. Firstly, analyze the aid allocation, um, aid allocation behaviors first, how the donor competition affects the aid allocation behavior, and then uh, run another analysis um, uh, looking into the relationship with how this doc donor's allocation behavior is working as a mediator to uh, affect the aid effectiveness. Um, include these different types of doc donors and use the same similar uh, data and the result was that um, DAC donors are made uh, widely they were very indifferent to the donor competition when making allocation because usually uh, when you see increased donor competition and uh, decrease of aid allocation we um, capture that as a signal of donor co coordination usually in academia like when you do the empirical analysis but it was difficult to find the decrease of allocation when the donor competition was increasing in um, in sectors or within a country. So um, it seemed, it turned out, that donor, adult donors are always um, talking about the donor competition, how we should be careful of that, how we should do, uh, focus more on donor coordination. But indeed, when they are making a location decision, they are not very uh, sensitive to that. And secondly, and uh, it's actually the same thing. So um, rather than looking into the sector level donor competition or country level donor competition, they just what they uh, largely follow the trend. 
if the water sanitation is the trend, we should focus more on water sanitation. We just pour money on there, um, regardless of the, the donor competition level there or at a fermentation level there. And the positive message uh, captured from this research was that when there was decrease of aid allocation uh, with increasing donor competition, I could detect the positive um, positive number of the mediation effect. So the mediation effect was positive when donor coordination signal was captured. So the and the third part was the behavior, uh, recipient behavioral change, and here. Um, it was conducted with the qualitative method, uh, with surveys and interviews. So it was actually invisible to um, measure whether the aid effectiveness actually increasing or decreasing. But the research was only done to this relationship. And this part was um, analyzed based on the theoretical research was, that was done previously. So um, I developed the survey questions and interview questions based on the theory of change, which is widely used when we are doing the evaluation in the international de for the international development programs. Um, so within, this is the causal relations that's leading to the aid effectiveness. And these, these boxes are the assumptions that are associated with these causal relationships. So the survey, survey questions and interview questions are developed to um, see whether these assumptions are actually met or not. Cool. You can go to the conclusion. Yes, I'm going to the conclusion. And in conclusion, donor con uh, competition in general was actually received by the recipient countries very positively. They, um, they, most of them said that with donor competition and with emerging donors, they now have more policy options and their bargaining power has been increased, which is influencing their ownership. It's strengthening their ownership and it's actually uh, leading them to redefine the ownership on their side because usually when we talk about aid ownership, it's actually defined by the donor side. But now they're um, making their move to redefine their ownership uh, with more bargaining power and more policy options. And, um, and it, it also affects the process of donor coordination because when before the, uh, they didn't have much participation uh, in the donor coordination process, now they have more ownership and bargaining power. They can make uh, active discussion with donors during the donor coordination process and they can reach the agreement before they actually implement any programs or projects. And theoretically, this should lead to the uh, increase of aid effectiveness. Um, so um, these three researches are causally related in leading to these final conclusions. And uh, it's basically saying the sector level analysis is important. We should focus more on uh, analyzing the sector level um, uh, conclusion or research, and that donor should be more encouraged to um, to actively do the donor coordination, not just with the words, uh, but they should change. Uh, they should show the change of their uh, behaviors, their decisions in uh, making allocations, because it uh, through the research it was proven that when they make any change or when they make efforts for donor coordination. It can, it can lead to the better aid effectiveness. And thirdly, the donor competition can work as leverage to uh, for the recipient side to secure their ownership and secure their uh, bargaining power. And it should lead to the, their more participatory attitude in the uh, aid development programs or pre uh, projects. Uh, this should be um, positively, positively affect the aid effectiveness. Um, I think that's uh, that's probably all with my research. Hope you enjoyed. I don't know if it was too off-site. <laughs> Any questions are welcome. Okay. Sure. Thanks a lot.
Thanks a lot also for keeping on time. There were a lot of messages there. We discussed a lot how to uh, let some, some of the key conclusions emerge so that they can feed into discussion here. And so we will, at this point we, we welcome questions both because it was a quite complex methodology. So if you have questions both on the methodology approach side or if you, with your questions you, or comments, you can, we can start moving the topic to more to the big picture. What does this mean for, for, uh, for, for this topic, for us? For us, meaning not only GCF, but other participants, because in this uh, room today there are not only GCF participants, but also others. Um, and uh, before we start, I just, uh, ask, uh, just uh, raise what is one of the possible evaluative questions which we have as evaluation unit. A broader question is whether it's better for um, uh, the old model or the previous model of different donors, you know, traditional donors, new donors as well, um, financing individually their projects uh, with their own transaction costs, of course, uh, with their own results, with their own easier accountability to their taxpayers or whomever they respond to, or whether it's better to merge the, the donor efforts into fewer efforts within climate financing, basically. And the idea of that is basically the GCF. So uh, which, which model is better? And I think this, this presentation gives us some hints that can help us interpret a bit this uh, or talk around this question. But having said that, I would like to start giving the, the floor to both clarificatory questions or methodology. And then uh, please also, let's look at the bigger picture. So we start with, uh, I take three questions at a time. So one, if you can say your name, and, uh, Affiliation, well, we know, but uh, you can repeat for everyone, given the audience is diverse. And then uh, two, if you, if you can follow, and then uh, one for one, please. Please, the floor is yours. Yo Yo from DMA. Um, just on the, about the second slide, you had the criticisms or negatives of the emerging donors. Um, using data from I think, old data, like 10 years ago, is that because there's no uh, criticism or, or or what is the latest criticism? Because you, you had the negatives from 10 years before, and then you had the good things using more recent papers. Thanks. We take one together, if possible, so you, you get time to think about the answer. Please. Uh, I think that it was a very interesting presentation. Thank you for that. Uh, I think I have a comment as well as a question. Uh, the comment part is uh, there is a very wide media narrative that uh, the aid that is coming from the emerging countries is not um, as equally effective like other OECD countries. But uh, your presentation uh, kind of shows it's probably uh, equally effective. So that was very interesting. I think there was another study done by Aid Data. I'm, I'm sure you know about it, you cited about it, that uh, uh, the aid coming from, especially from China in Africa, is equally effective like other OECD countries. They measured the, how much GDP it actually contributes to, as well as uh, how, ma uh, how many jobs it actually creates. So in this context, I think, I mean, uh, uh, your, your findings is also very relevant and interesting. How do you see that? How do you, do, I mean, relate this and the other study by the aid data has done? And uh, my question is about the coordination part. Uh, I mean, aid is often is driven by, I think it's well cited in many papers, uh, geostrategic interest. And uh, if you look into the, uh, the, I mean, for the USA, what are the most countries where the USA goes and for, also for China, and you will see there are military presence as well as few strategic interests revolving around those countries. So when you talk about coordination among those major donors, what is this coordination thing? Because I think, I mean, of course, there is this very benevolent narrative very uh, uh, out there, but also, I mean, countries do give aid for certain, I mean, I'm not sure if this is completely altruistic motive, but I mean, to take care of their strategic interest and other interests uh, regionally. So when you talk about coordination, what uh, actually you mean by coordination? Yeah. 
Okay. Thanks. Also, it's good to give your name when you introduce the oh, sorry. question. <laughs> I'm Shamir from the Independent Virtus Mechanism. Okay. Okay. Uh, Solomon uh, Aspo from the Dependent Evaluation Unit. Perhaps I, uh, most of my colleagues would ask you the bigger picture. I'd like to ask some methodological issues. Uh, I mean, I'm not clear how do you define aid itself. Is that like the financial aid? Is that like grants? Or you are considering also technical aid? Uh, aids in terms of re reduction in interest rates, loan. I mean, there will be some element of that. I think that there will be a conflation on that. Another point is heterogeneity in, in terms of the effects of this aid. I could imagine like he pointed, uh, not in terms of least developed country, I think what's much more insightful would be to unpack the analysis into, into Africa region, even with an African how heterogeneous is that. That would help from a Paul's point of view. Uh, in terms of, I did not see the model you use basically in terms of your estimation strategy. I'd be curious at least to know what kind of model did you use. And I could imagine some of the the variables you used in terms of the GDPs and so on, uh, some, given that there is, you are using some of the lag variables, some issues related to endogeneity, and, and, and proxies for governance also. AIDS is often related to how good governance is in the structure to be effective and so on. And the last point I'd like to uh, mention is also you care about the sectoral analysis, but I could imagine also the, the intersectoral correlation generally. To address that, you need to kind of submit in terms of uh, multivariate kind of smashes and how do you correct that correlation in your terms between different sectors? Thanks. So while we give time to Chirun to uh, prepare the answer, just one one uh, clarification on that on the methodology, uh, the presentation we saw it in advance. It was a very rich and uh, and very uh, complex study. So we kept we decided to keep some aspects outside. So it's up to you how much you want to go in detail about that. And of course there will be chance also at the end. Or you are welcome to our uh, 17th floor to discuss further on the methodology. But it's up to you if you want to give this uh, further detail. But please, if you want to start with some answers. Um, I'll start with the first question regarding the criticisms on emerging donors. I actually didn't have space to put all the uh, literature study I done um, in this presentation, so I just picked the the most um, salient one, like the, its threat or something like that. So that's why the literature was. Um, David a long ago, but usually this this kind of criticisms are continuing um, up to now. It's not like the past opinion, it's still continuing. But uh, the different uh, there's some difference these days because some of the uh, studies on uh, Shamel actually mentioned it that some of the studies are finding that emerging donors are um, making positive changes in this uh, field of international development these days. So those criticisms are. Um, kind of diluting, I guess, these days, but still, it's it's an ongoing um, debate and discussion on emerging donors. Okay, hope to answer it. And to Shamil, um, thank you for the comment. Yes, um, and I also use the data from um, adata.org because they provide uh, the data, a data from the emerging donors. So I I am aware of other studies that are. Um, concluding on the same remarks of mine, um, although the methodologies and the frameworks are quite different. Um, and the coordination part uh, in this research, um, the, I'm, I'm talking about the coordination in the sector level. Um, but the country level also is very important. But then country level allocation decision is usually made uh, very strategically, uh, also politically. So. Um, Research, many researchers and many professionals in this field understand that uh, country level aid allocation decisions cannot be changed um, based on the level of dollar competition. But at least um, if we are aware of, if we decide to give some money to, um, I don't know, Ghana, and we know that some of the sectors there are very much fragmented then at least we can decide um, maybe we should focus on the other sectors that are less fragmented. Or if we know like the fragmentation level doesn't really matter in this sector in terms of uh, achieving the outcome, then we can just proceed with that decision. So um, donor competition I know cannot decide or cannot determine solely the aid allocation behavior, but then still it can um, give some evidences or directions when making micro decisions. Um, deciding on the sector level in the location. Um, 
Is it enough? We can talk about it yeah, again after the Q&A session. Always, yeah. I'll stay here for a while. Um, first of all, oh, thanks for the question um, about the methodology. I actually have other set of slides that, um, just in case there was uh, questions regarding the methodology. Well, without actually showing them, but if you um, can just tell in general what so would be the answer for I used the country and year fixed models to for the first research. And um, the, the control variables are included to um, avoid any possible endogeneity, but still because there is always a uh, possibility that uh, there's no, there are still factors that are not measured or identified that can cause endogeneity. That's why I used a fixed effect model. And for the intersectoral analysis, uh, I actually run the analysis sector by sector, not in one model. So it was uh, actually a lot of analysis, and that's why I made a, uh, results into the box plus to see the trends, because it was not no use to see all these empirical analysis results in, uh, in tables, because there were like um, 60, 60 more than 60 results. But I can show you the models after the q and session. I have the slides. Not sure if the other, other points you uh, touched were answered also, because you raised right the, the first two points. Be interesting for the heterogeneity, and what is it? Oh, oh what is it? Sorry. Um, it's the, um, it's actually not, it, the laws are not included. It's mostly the ODAs, um, uh, including the technical support, technical assistance, but not the uh, financial loans. So those are the definition of aid in this. Um, research. It's mainly the aid program. Uh, it's based. On, it's actually project level um, aid, but for the China data, uh, OOF is also included as aid because their definition of aid is quite different from the DAC definition. Otherwise, for other countries, aid is the ODA, in, uh, excluding the loans. Okay. As far as the first round of comments or questions goes, uh, thank you very much for that, for all the three contributors. And another round of three, if possible. Well, let's start. First one. Any anyone else at this stage? Uh, thank you for your input here, uh, presentation. I'm J.K. I'm working for Country Team. Uh, you know, I, I was used to see the OST data, and you just clarify, uh, you know, donor, you know, data. Uh, I mean, means that the public. Know, public side, you know, public contributions, uh, but um, I think that, that it might be the different angle of the competition, but there might be the different competition between the donor and the local industry. So, you know, famous, you know, story is the most connect, you know, destroy the local industry. So, uh, because GCF is also focusing on private sector uh, facilitation, uh, you know, uh, in addition to the public, you know, you know, grant or aid, whatever it is, but there is also a different angle of the donor contribution, something like the trade facilitation and and the trap by the you know OECD countries. So I'm not sure whether you think about the kind of the competition between the donor and the local private sector, but uh, do you have any any idea or something? Um, actually, I didn't consider that in my research. But I understand there's a um, hot debate going on how the donors are actually competing with the local industry in many of the recipient countries, especially uh, the recipient countries that are um, demonstrating uh, lots of growth, like not the case of the least developed countries. But um, unfortunately, it's, it's not in included in the, in the research. But certainly the indicators that are used to measure the aid effectiveness in the sectors in this research are associated probably much a lot with the activities of the local industry as well. But um, uh, in my perspective, because the, the analysis done only with the least developed countries, the effects are usually higher than the regular results. That means that um, the aid, the aid, effect, uh, aid activities of donors are dominating the effects, not the local industry. So perhaps in, in um, the least developed countries, uh, such competition uh, is not that much of a consideration. But uh, certainly it's a very interesting topic to work on, I think. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else after? Or? Yes, so let's start. Okay, I think mine is just a simple your, your name also? Okay. Jeremiah from uh, procurement, GSS. 
Mine is a simple question, maybe sitting. How do you define age effectiveness? Um, Sylvie from uh, Recent Compliance. So uh, the GCF, we see, I mean, we are a recipient of donor, I mean, donors, but we're also a donor to the countries and we invest in each sector. So from your research, can you give us some recommendations, given that we are in investing in each sector, what should we do um, to improve aid effectiveness in our location? Um. So for the definition of aid effectiveness, um, I actually wrote like, 10 pages on the definition of aid effectiveness in my original um, this because there are so many debates going on how to define the aid effectiveness. But just um, for the sake of the research, I guess, because some type of indicators or measurement was needed to do, to, to do the empirical analysis. And we cannot measure how people, the perceivedness of the recipient side or the change of their um, individual household's income or anything. So their, um, the aid effectiveness, I guess, in this, at least in this research, is defined with the indicators I showed you. So that was um, actually, there are quite many limitations on that, but that was, uh, for the research sake, that was my decision to um, limit the definition of aid effectiveness in this research. And for uh, the recommendation for GCF, I think it actually relates to what Roberto was talking about in the beginning of this uh, presentation, how the donor competition and how the models, right now the GCF is using, they're collecting money from donors, their, uh, the do donors donate their money to this institution, and this institution uh, provides aid or in different forms. Uh, do you guys do the projects uh, directly as well, or do you guys only provide loans or fundings? Both, yeah. So, um, especially for the multi-environment sector and social sectors, which is quite related to the programs or projects that be related to the GCF, they are uh, turned out to be very vulnerable to the donor competition. And um, in terms of that, if GCF can, um, instead of going through the donor coordination process between all different donors in that sectors, GCF is actually, I think, doing the process um, um, in part of them because they're like, uh, they're donating the money to GCF, like believing that GCF would be allocating the money or funding the money to the project or program that can make some change. They can actually bring out a uh, um, real outcome. So in that sense, it's um, supplementing, I guess, the donor coordination process, what the GCF is doing. But um, for the recommendation, if GCF can be more active in communicating with donors and maybe facilitate the communication between the donors and recipient side and even between the donors relating um, relate to uh, the ideas of programs or uh, allocation of the monies or deciding the sectors, uh, that'd be very uh, helpful, I think. I'm not sure, I'm not very familiar with the financing mechanism, but then the whole whole donor coordination process is always very closely related to the financing mechanism. So I think the way that GCF is doing now is actually complementing the donor coordination process between the donors. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone wants to add on this or complement what uh, she's saying? Yeah, please. Yes, uh, I think uh, I think your work has maybe uh, less to the how GCF operates, but I think uh, from I think from a policy point of view, generally about this donor competition, I think one clear relevancy of your research is what is happening, for instance, what he mentioned in African context that there is a lot of emerging Chinese investment donors going on. And that created a kind of a cycle from the traditional donors that this new emerging donors is like exploiting uh, the, the African, it's kind of reframing, there is a new way of uh, colonialism and trying to exploit and so on. I think there is a lot of gap there to fill in terms of generating evidence, how is the competition there, and what kind of policy kind of advice would you give to them. 
Uh, I've consulted with a number of uh, uh, actors in that, in that region, also academicians generally. Most of the African government would tell you, we prefer the Chinese donors be that as European or the US because there's less stringence on their aid. We don't. We are not required to comply with the stricter good governance structures, and we could accept the fund. And, and on the other hand, also you could see visibly Chinese aid investment on the road when you go to a number of African countries. There's a visible uh, impact you would see. Whether that is sustainable or not is a different question. There is a lot of empirical or or kind of analytical study that requires to kind of test those whether there's competition between the traditional donors versus. This emerging. I think if you could tailor this research uh, findings into that concrete kind of uh, ongoing debates at the, at the regional level, it would be, uh, I think, quite useful beyond the academic exercise that you are suggesting. Yeah, thanks very much for that very important reality check and statement. Anything else? Any other comments or uh, uh, broadening further the question or discussion? Yes, please. I just had a really quick question. Because you, um, in the beginning of your presentation, your name also? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Stormy from APCICT. Um, you briefly um, mentioned that there, um, among, I mean, among the emerging donors, there are basically three categories, and I'm just wondering. I'm sure they they have their own sort of strategies or their patterns and don um, donations. Um, but in your um, research, you basically tie them up in one group and you kind of like random regressions using them as like a whole. Almost with homogenous groups, I was just wondering whether you saw some um, distinctive um, donating patterns um, among the three categories. Um, I actually didn't uh, run the empirical analysis with, uh, on the uh, eight patterns of these uh, different emerging donors. The reason I categorized them was because uh, there were many debates on how to define the emerging donors. Usually, emerging donors are represented by China or India, and, um, and Arab donors are uh, less um, discussed. Um, but in the literature and uh, at, in, even in data, you can see like the aid amounts provided by Arab donors are very overseeing. So that's why I included, and I'm actually following the other previous literatures as well. I'm not just coming up with this these categories randomly. So um, to the reason I mentioned these three groups were to recognize that there are different types of emerging donors working in this field uh, with different histories of aid, and, um, but then they are um, equally very active in this field and they are increasing their activities um, in terms of both financing um, loans and aid events, like actual programs or projects. Although the the loans and uh, budget support is not included in this research. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? Otherwise, we are approaching the end of this session on time. Anyone else with last statement or last comment? <coughs> okay, then we, we will uh, close it in a minute. Just uh, uh, to thank you all. In the meantime, I'll give you some good news. Some. Uh, more sandwiches of mother rice in the back. And I, I assure you, we have not been holding them or hiding them for our own consumption. We simply, I simply have to thank the, the, our colleagues who saw the higher than expected turnout and went to buy some more. So and nobody's left behind somehow. Uh, so um, with that, thank you very much to for, uh, for the presentation and for being here. And thanks for your comments. Thank you. Thank you so much.